Rock isn't dead. It's in flux. Hi, everyone. I'm Britt with Rock and Flux, and I am joined today by Michael from the band House of Harm. Thank you for being with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I always start out the same way. For people who maybe aren't familiar with you all, can you just kind of give me your backstory and and give me a little bit of information about your band and how you all got started and how long you've been at this? We're a band from Boston, Massachusetts. We started, I think we released our first demo in um, 2017 middle of 2017-ish, at least an EP in 2018. When we first started, it was just um, Cooper and myself. And then 2018, Tyler joined on. Um, and we released our debut record, Vicious Pastimes with Avant, in 2020. And yeah. How did you all um, connect with Avant Records? Uh, we were talking back and forth for... When we when we first made that first demo, we kind of... We sent it out to a few labels and stuff. And Andrea from Avant took an interest in then we ended up doing an EP and he liked that as well. And then um, shortly after that came out, so it must've been in, that came out in November of 2018. So early 2019, we were talking back and forth and he said, how about we do a full length? Uh, we were kind of waiting to, we had a lot of songs and stuff even in the beginning, but I wanted to kind of get started a little bit and uh, get some more experience and play some shows before we released a full length. So we kind of waited a couple of years actually and waited for a label to, was one to put it out. And then uh, he agreed in 2019. And then I think we completed it. We turned it into him in January 1st of 2020. Um, and we all know what happened after that. So we kind of pushed back a little bit and then we, it was released in September of 2020. Okay. Um, and there's three of you then. Yeah, we're a three piece. Yep. Okay. Well, cool. So talking about 2020, so you push that back to September but even, I mean, September and the fall, it was getting better at that point, but it was still pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, it was like, there was no shows or anything like that. I think like we were, it was originally going to, the plan, the release date was originally in April of 2020, but just because it was just the uncertainty of the world and it was kind of like, it just, uh, just the focus of the entire world was on other things, obviously figuring it out. Um, so we pushed it back just for, just to let things settle down. People kind of realize like, we're not all going to die, I guess. I don't know. We'd kind of get a game plan or something. But yeah, it was still, it was like the height of COVID still. But it just, I was, I, we weren't willing to, there's no point in really waiting. You know what I mean? It's like for what? So we figured we'd get it out there. Um, it actually worked out well for us because, I mean, there was such a, a highlight on on artists because um, the fact that you kind of, your livelihood was stripped from you in terms of playing shows and stuff. And people seem to have a lot of free time on their hands. So we were able to kind of really listen. So we got a lot of attention straight when we released it. Obviously, we couldn't play shows for another year, but it was nice. I mean, we had a great reception. Uh, so, Right. I was going to say, I mean, the positive of that is, and I feel like especially because there was so much uncertainty and things were so crazy, I think people needed that kind of entertainment, whether it was music or television shows or whatever else to kind of distract themselves. And it, the thing about music is it's always so cathartic in one way or another, you know? Um, it's so... It's so mood based. So I think when you're going through something like that, to have something that you enjoy listening to is obviously only going to help. Yeah, I agree. And, and uh, it worked out well too. Like, I mean, we had the the whole rollout of the record was planned before this, but then basically we announced a record and dropped the lead single on the first ever or one of the first Bandcamp Fridays. It leads to second single on a Bandcamp Friday, and the uh, record came out on a Bandcamp Friday just by chance. Uh, we didn't even realized that was a thing. So it was kind of, every time we kind of dropped something, it was like Bandcamp was doing the their big push, which was, which helped out all, all artists. I mean, to be honest, it's not really, they're certainly not a company that's like saving the world. They take 20, 15% or something of all your sales and they, one day a month, they let you keep all the money, which is nice, but it kind of, it made a lot of people really kind of inv invest in, in bands and stuff on that specific day. So it worked out obviously really well for us. Um, nice. Is that where you all mostly sell your music is Bandcamp? Um, it's where we sell our merch, yeah. We have a website too and we we sell through like another platform. But it, it's Bandcamp is just the number one thing that people go to. Yeah. Okay, so you know, we talked about where people can listen. Obviously you're on all the, the streaming platforms. So if for people who who are listening to the show but maybe haven't listened to House of Harm, if you had to choose one song like to suggest for them to start out listening to your band, what song do you think you would choose? 
I would say probably the title track, uh, Vicious Pastimes. Okay, let's give it a listen. that song do you think what makes it you choose that particular one what about it um it's good energy kind of checks all the boxes in terms of you know emotional depth and sound palette interesting tones and stuff it's just kind of that's if i pick one song that represents us as a whole it's probably that one okay and it's fun so i obviously i was reading about you all because i was preparing for this and one of the things that i read is that everyone else refers to you all as post punk except yourselves <laughs> which i thought was funny i feel like post punk has kind of become like a catch all for it's like the new alt rock term i guess if someone asks you what do you sound like and like what your style is what would you tell them um well i think in, in us saying that it's not so much anything uh, against the term post-punk it's just the, against any kind of label any term you know i don't, I don't think uh, i think that's it's more about that and it's i don't know it's just something that comes up i think nothing bothers me I, I i wouldn't try to say we're this kind of band or whatever because i know what this band can be in the future in five six seven ten years from now so it's it could be a lot different than it is now you know so it's um i, I don't even know i just call us a band I, you can call us a post-punk band that's fine i wouldn't even put a label on it i guess yeah. I mean, I understand why, because you all have, I mean, you have a distinct style, but I could hear influences from, from a variety of places, obviously. And I, I wanted to talk to you about like, you know, who influences you. It's very, very clear that there's big, the cure influence there. And I, I'm assuming even because the, the guitar tones that you have are very, very reminiscent of kind of that cure sound, but what other influences do you think you have as a band? I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say. I think it's more of like a, sometimes you don't even know your influences because it's just the the music that you kind of grew up with or whatever that's kind of ingrained in you. And everyone has a, you know, a different upbringing. So there's, whether it be, you know, hip hop or classic rock or whatever, there's this stuff that's in you that you can't really shed, you know? So it's, it's like a lifetime of influences, you know what I mean? Um, so we kind of just look at it like, what influences your mind and then your your mind creates the songs, you know? So when we're sitting down and making stuff, we don't really talk like, let's try to make a song that sounds like this band or something. It just kind of comes out in your songwriting, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously we, we our, our sound palette is really kind of, we like the, you know, dreamy, heavy chorus guitars and uh, drum machines and stuff like that. I think we, we just completed a new record and we have live drums on, it's basically like five songs are drum machine based with real drum overdubs and then five songs are real drums with uh, drum machine overdubs so it's kind of um we're kind of evolving always you know it's i think maybe when when the next record comes out it'll be a bit more clear maybe some people will be able to kind of pick up on other influences but it's kind of hard to say um like specifically because it's kind of just what's inside of you you know and what and then what ends up coming out is a mixture of everything you know and i was going to ask you as well cuz i mean with all the different 
sound styles that you all have, I'm imagining that there's quite a bit of like pedals uh, involved in your guitars and, and different things like that. You kind of tell me about like, I'm so interested in gear and, and the ways that musicians create some of the sounds that they create. And I know really nothing about it. <laughs> so I, I just like, how, how many pedals do you think you would typically use when you're writing music? Well, I'm looking at uh, like 15 on the floor right in front of me right now. I just got a new <laughs> one this morning. So uh, um, we, it's, it's something that we actually kind of have to strip back as time goes on. Like I know for myself anyway, for like playing guitar, it's like I had my pedal board was, was ridiculous. So it was just so many different things. And you kind of learn, you know, you can strip stuff away. You don't really need that much, you know. So now we're kind of kind of look at it a, a, with a bit more simplicity and kind of think, you know, there's always going to be your your core, like five or six pedals that you you always need, you know. And then you'll kind of throw like one wild card effect on there. We we kind of build our base for our sounds, and then we'll we try to the more you 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 pile them up, they can kind of just sound muddy. So as of late, we've been trying to kind of just have like one specific effect that's very noticeable and kind of have it be that have that special effect, you know. But I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like an endless thing because sometimes. The song will will tell you what to do next. You know what I mean? You know, the song will tell you if it needs more or whatever. But then sometimes you get just a really cool sound out of just messing around with the crazy pedal chain that are or in incorrect orders. Just, but you get a cool sound out of it, and that's kind of the magic. And you just track it and move on. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's like I could get as long as I had chorus and reverb, I'm good. It's just a, that's it. Everything else is like is a bonus. But for me, that's like a necessity. I wouldn't even pick up a guitar without that. Do you think some people go too far with the effects and things like that? Because I mean, there's so many options available that I would imagine it's easy to to go overboard. Yeah, I mean, sure, I'm sure I, have, I wouldn't. Uh, but if that's what they want to do, that's that's cool too. You know, it's just it's sometimes you just got to be able to put it in context and realize, like, because if you have you work in this uh, insular world of your setup and what you hear and you kind of get used to hearing guitar sounds with so much stuff on it. And then you're, you can add in one more pedal in the chain. It's like, Oh, that's, that's cool. Not realizing that like you're kind of fucked from the beginning in terms of what other people might think. Cause it's already so crazy, you know? So it's always just good to kind of get like a perspective of like a kind of like a clean slate. So even for me working, like I kind of making demos at home, working in logic, I like I'll clear out my channel strip settings and just start over again, just to kind of keep things fresh. So I don't get, too used to the same sounds, you know, because I, th I think that's when you kind of will, you'll end up just overdoing it. And you're just kind of, you got to just kind of keep your ears, um, keep your ears on his toes, I guess. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I try to keep on every couple of months, uh, max, I'll, I'll like reset everything and kind of build it from the ground up again, because it's fun. And it also, it kind of protects against that type of situation where it's just like, you're, you're overdoing it and then you're used to that sound, you know? So, but it's definitely something we're conscious of for sure. How does that affect your live show? So being a three piece, do you feel more pressure to create the same sound when you're live that you do that you have on the album? Like, do you find difficulty because there's only three of you with that? Um, I wouldn't say difficulty, but we try to find for live. It's, it's, it's a great question because for live, we you're going to make compromises, you know, in terms of tone, in terms to just to have it be cohesive and make sense and not have a crazy board. But we try to just, you know, we do the best we can. What we do for live is basically we'll limit ourselves. We're going to use this gear and we we just do the try to recreate the tones the best we can with, with just that gear you know um and try to have something that's universal and like pick you know have an amp tone that will work for all the songs so you kind of you'll make compromises here or there just for the so it's for a better experience for live for number one so we don't have to bring 10 amps to every show and and all these numerous pedal boards um and then and also for the listener it's you know there's not enough time to really dial all that stuff in and in, in your sound check to make sure it's all good so just to make sure it's every show is uh, repeatable and consistent we'll kind of just have an approximation of the sounds and replicate them with a, a more limited uh, pedal board and setup so again that's a great question so yeah it's something we put a lot of time into because you know if there's like a special uh, a really special part in a song or whatever it, it, that calls for that you, you kind of have to do it but for the most part it's like we can get by with just only a few effects so we, we kind of just uh make something that will be similar from song to song but still be have their own special moments you know yeah what could people expect from your live show so if they've never seen you all live before what would you tell them to expect um hopefully a great show um yeah i mean we try to we put a lot into into our live show for sure um we practice a lot, you know, we have our own lights. We, we, we take pride in, you know, 
how it looks from an audience perspective, all that stuff. And we put a lot of work into how we're going to play the songs. It's, I mean, it's kind of, it's a completely different thing recording and playing live. So it's, you kind of have to adapt them to a live setting. Like, like I was saying before, to have them, all the sounds be cohesive from one another. Uh, hopefully you expect, uh, or you can expect to see us in the best way possible live. Right. Do you all have any shows coming up? I, I saw a show in May that you have coming up in Portland, Maine. Do you have other shows coming up? I saw that there's mention of shows this year. Um, is there a tour planned or what are your plans for that? Uh, yeah, we have, I think we're announcing a few East Coast shows Tuesday, actually. So East Coast, we're coming. Well, I mean, we're already here, but, um, and we will be going to the other side of the country in the late summer. So that should be announced in like a month or two. So nice. We have shows. I can't say too much, uh, but we're we're doing shows uh, far from home this year. So well, I'm in Phoenix, so I'm hoping maybe I can get a, a close one. I'll come check you all out. Uh, we, you will see us. Okay, cool. So we've talked a lot about you know your music in general, but getting a little bit more specific. So you released Vicious Pastimes in 2020, and I I really I mean that album is great. There's so many good songs on there that I really like. Isolator is, I think, one of my favorites. And it's, I I don't know, I I think you all do a really good job of of mixing different styles on that album, um, because you have like more of those atmospheric pop songs, kind of like always. And then you, I think Isolator starts out a little bit more dark, but then it still, it, it picks up. When you're writing songs, I know you've, we've talked about this a little bit, but how does that kind of come together where like, is it purposeful that you kind of mix that up on the album or is it just how like the writing process kind of happens? And also in addition to that, do you all write together most of the time? That's always an interesting question for me for bands because some people do. And then some people, even though, even if they could be together, they're still just emailing back and forth ideas. For Vicious Pastimes, it's it's a bit weird because this, the songs were written over the course of a few years because it was our first record. So we had, I think Isolator was a, a rich, uh, originally released in early 2018. So that was like two years before the record actually came out. Um, so for that one, we kind of just, in like half the record was already released before, just in different forms um, through like EPs and demos and stuff. So it was kind of like gathering all the the work we did over the over the past few years um, and putting them all in one. So you, I think you can probably notice it a little bit more how different some of the songs are. I mean, most people, I mean, that it flows fine, but it, from the beginning to the end, I mean, there's a, there's a huge, in my opinion, there's a huge, a big leap in, in terms of writing and from like Isolator to Vicious Pastimes, you know, it's, it's, I can see it because I know where our headspace was when we did Isolator and I know where we ended up when we did Vicious Pastimes. Um, so that one is probably more varied than it would have been if we just wrote all the songs and, in the six month time, but we do like to have some variation for sure. I mean, um, we write individually, all of us, and then we bring our ideas together and kind of work them out as a three piece. So we have like tons of ideas, but to really make it a house of harm song, it has to kind of get the treatment of all three of us. So we individually write a lot and then we bring them together. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because I, I did notice that like you, you released, um, several of those songs before and then added them onto that that full album right yeah and then in 2022 you you put two singles out um so it was feel my heartbeat and in threes it what made you just release those singles instead of an album just to kind of keep the music coming out yeah so we did that we recorded them the album that's it's obviously we haven't announced or anything yet but it's basically it's being mastered as we speak so it's almost out so um we knew it was going to be kind of a long time um, before people would hear it so we kind of we had these singles ready to go they, they're they not on the album um but we wanted to be able to kind of give people some music while we were waiting for the new it would probably be like a year or so so we had those ready to go um so we just figured we release them just to kind of keep our momentum going um give people what they want to hear while we were taking so much time to make that record so that's yeah that's they're just it's just something to you know, keep people engaged and hopefully give them music they enjoy. But yeah, the idea of it is that they were just kind of, it would just buy us some time, you know, because I don't like to be too silent for too long. No, yeah, that makes sense. When is the new album expected to come out? Do you have a date for it yet? Not officially. I have a, a rough idea, but by the end of this year, for sure. Okay, cool. And so you've done also several music videos. So you did one for Vicious Pastimes, which is you all kind of performing with some effects 
on the video. And then you've done one for Waste of Time and you did one for Feel My Heartbeat, which that one you're performing, it's kind of like a car garage. Can you tell me the, the concept and how how you came up with each of those and um, what made you also choose the songs that you that you did videos for? Um, for all the videos, we work with um, Tyler's partner. She's a director, so we we, we kind of have some rough ideas and we'll kind of talk it out and kind of just basically start filming. Um, we're lucky where we have someone very close to the band who can kind of see visions, see our vision kind of through. And it's not like kind of reaching out to someone you don't know and it's kind of, you might use more restraint with your ideas and be uh, not want to try something crazy or whatever. But we have such a, we're so close to her that we can kind of just do whatever we want and she's on board, you know. But yeah, we it's it's a fun thing. It's for me, it's kind of, it's us really having fun, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I was going to actually ask you, like, are you one of those people that like you have fun with the filming of it? Or do you get, because like, I know I get nervous. The second I know I'm purposely doing anything, I can't take myself serious. Like, it's just a nerves thing. So do you get nervous at all? Or do you like find the process fun? Yeah, I don't get nervous because you kind of have to shed that like day one or else you can't really operate, you know, as a band. I mean, I my nerves in terms of like, like even like playing stuff, it's not, it's, I'm not like nervous. I get like excited and nervous, but not like nervous, like where I'm scared. But we actually, we filmed the video yesterday, um, <laughs> right, right here for another single that's not on the, on the record, but it's, it's one of those things where you kind of just figure it out as you go. And then after the third, fourth video, you kind of get a little bit more comfortable, but it is, it is at first, it's, it's completely different than playing music, uh, which is kind of like my, that's my sweet spot. It's my home. You know, I get, I can go on stage and perform and, and do the songs because I'm, that's what I'm good at. Uh, filming is a completely different thing. So at, at first, for sure, it's like, it is what it is, I guess. It's just someone, it's something that I hope that, you know, you, you kind of get more comfortable as, as it goes on. Yeah. I mean, I think with anything, because like sometimes it's just awkward at first, but then once you kind of get into the rhythm and used to it, I guess it just is easier to do. Yeah, hundred percent. So I mean, when when we're doing it too, like when we're like playing the songs, where for us, what helps me anyway is like we like we're like really playing the songs, you know. Okay, I was going to ask: Do you actually play, or is, are you kind of mimicking? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's edited to the real song. But what I what I found is what creates the best, you know, what, what looks the best is like we're just really actually playing the song, and it makes the day much more bearable uh, for me anyway, you know. So it's, it's, we have fun when we're doing it, you know, and sometimes we'll have some ideas, but it's at the end of the day, it's just, it's something for people to watch, you know, to see you. So I have a lot of respect for artists that kind of can make videos that look really crazy or whatever. But for us, it's kind of, uh, we try not to, and most of the videos, it's kind of like us just playing the songs. Cause I mean, that's, that's what we do, but yeah, we've been, we've had a, some good experiences for sure though. Um, making, making the, the videos and stuff that I remember. Well, one another video that I, I noticed on YouTube that I wanted to ask you about it was Sonic Unrest. And it's basically, where are you all? It, you're basically playing like a full album. Yeah, that was, um, so to go back to like the 2020 year, so we, we couldn't do like a, a record release show or anything. So we just did like a live set. We filmed it um, in an apartment in Boston, overlooking the pike pretty much. But yeah, we just played played a bunch of our songs and just uh, filmed it, put it out there so people could you know enjoy it and it was a lot of fun for us. Yeah, it's it turned out really cool. I, so I, I haven't actually seen any other bands. At least I have not seen anything like that in that format. So I thought that was a good idea. It was cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you have so you have a new album coming out. You have shows coming up. Is there anything else that you would maybe want listeners or your fans to know, or people who haven't listened to you that are maybe listening to this to know about your band? It's a tough question. I don't. Know. I never thought about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, maybe just listen to the music and I don't know. <laughs> but you have a lot of stuff coming up. So you're, you have shows um, planned for the East Coast this spring. You have shows in the summer um, farther out West. There's an album coming out. Your Instagram handle is at House of Harm. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy. And you also have a bunch of stuff on YouTube for people to check out as well. So lots going on. and. Um, I mean, I personally think your music is great. I, I tend to like that, not to put a label on it, but if I had to put a label on no, it, that's fine. it's fine. Like, I, I, I don't want you to think that like, we're against the, the label. I'm really not. It's something that just comes up. That's, that's completely fine. But um, It's like 80s nostalgia yeah, uh, yeah, with, sure. a lot, with a lot of synth, which I tend to always like a lot. So I think it's great. 
Cool. Well, thank you. I think you're going to like the, the new record. It's sort right of your alley. I can't wait to share it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to listen to it um, when you all release it and excited to see you all live too. So I appreciate you again, taking the time to be with me and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to hearing the new stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.